This video explains the mechanism of the mark-to-mark -mark process related to currency futures. We'll briefly review currency futures contracts. We'll discuss the concept of mark-to-market. We'll then take a look at an example where a speculator takes a long position or agrees to buy the euro. We'll also take a look at an example where a speculator takes a short position or agrees to sell the euro. A currency futures contract is an agreement between two parties where one party agrees to buy and the other party agrees to sell a fixed amount of currency at a future date known as the delivery date. The party that expects the currency to rise takes a long position at the agreed upon price. The party that expects the currency to fall agrees to sell or takes a short position at the agreed upon price. Futures contracts have standardized features and are traded on organized exchanges such as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. By standardized features, we mean the, uh, the contract size, for example, of 125,000 euros. Instead of physical delivery of currencies in the future, the contracts are generally cash settled. This means the buyer of the contract will sell the contract at a later date instead of taking delivery of the currency and the seller of the contract will buy back the contract at a later date instead of making delivery of the currency. The futures exchange acts as an intermediary to minimize the risk of default by either party. Therefore, the exchange requires both parties to deposit an initial amount of cash, which is known as the initial margin, there are daily fluctuations in futures prices and they are settled after the closing every day. The exchange withdraws money from the margin account that has lost value and deposits that money into the other party's margin account. If the margin account of either party drops below a certain value called the maintenance margin, a margin call is triggered and the account owner must replenish the margin account. This process is known as mark-to-market. Let's take a look at two examples. In the first example, we have a speculator who's taking a long position or wants to buy the underlying currency, the euro, expecting the euro to rise. The initial margin is 3,250 and the maintenance margin is 2,400. Here we are going to track the daily activity of the margin account. In step one, Monday morning, the speculator buys futures contract at 1.2100. Therefore, the contract value is 151,000 we get this amount by multiplying the futures rate by the contract size of 125,000 euros. There is no change from the previous position because the buyer just entered into the contract and the balance is 3250 which is the initial margin. Monday closing time the settlement is done. The futures rates close at 1.2074. The value of the contract drops by $325. The buyer was expecting the currency to rise but instead it has dropped. So $325 is deducted from the buyer's account. The account drops to $29.25 but still is well above the maintenance margin of $2,400, so no margin call is triggered. 
In step three, Tuesday at the closing time, the futures rate settles at 1.1986. The contract value is 149.825. This is a drop of $1,100 from the previous day. And the balance drops to 1825 This is below the maintenance margin of $2,400. So a margin call is triggered and the buyer is required to add $575 to the margin account to bring the balance up to $2,400. In step four on Wednesday, the futures close at 1.2054. There is a change, positive change this time of $850, which is added to the margin account of the buyer, and the balance goes up to $3,250. On Thursday, the buyer decides to sell the contract and the price is 1.2130 so the value of the contract is 151,625 950 dollars is added and that brings the balance of the buyer to 4200 dollars so the net gain to the buyer is 4200 dollars minus the initial margin minus the margin call and that's a net gain of $375. Let's see what happens to the position of the seller. The seller took a short position. The initial margin is the same, $3,250. The maintenance margin is also the same, $2,400. On Monday morning, the speculator took a short position or sold the contract expecting the euro to decline in value. The value of the contract is 151,250 and the balance is 3250. At the closing on Monday, the euro indeed drops in value, which means the speculator has gained in this case $325, which is added to the speculator's account and the account goes up to $35.75. Tuesday closing time, the account goes up by another $1,100. So the balance now is $46.75 in the margin account. On Wednesday at the closing time, the futures rate settled to 1.2054, which means the account has lost $850 compared to the day before and that is deducted from the balance which drops to $38.25. On day five, the seller buys back the contract. Remember, otherwise the seller would have to deliver the actual currency in order to avoid that the seller is buying the seller is buying back the contract at 1.2130 which is a drop of $950 and the balance before margin is 28.75 so the seller was expecting the currency the euro to decline but here it has gone up so there is a net loss for the seller the net loss is the balance at, at the end, which is $28.75 minus the initial deposit. So that is $375. Notice there was no margin call triggered for the seller because the seller's account, margin account, never dropped below $2,400. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.